This isn't just any old honey, it's Manuka honey. And in its purest form, it can cost up to $99 per 100 grams. That's more than 100 times the price of normal honey. So why is it so expensive? Manuka honey is known for being earthier, richer, and more viscous than many other honeys. It comes from the nectar of the flower Leptospermum scoparium, also known as Manuka, which is only native to New Zealand. And Manuka, in fact, is a Maori word. The fact that it comes from New Zealand, that gives it a premium just to start with. And because the bee travels up to about six kilometres to collect this honey. And so this honey is representative of the environment, and that environment is of New Zealand, Aotearoa. The plant itself and the honey is very, very rare. Out of all the honeys in the world, it probably represents 1% of all the world honeys. It's difficult to harvest. It's only a two to six week harvesting period, and the flower is only open for, any, for 12 days. And in New Zealand, we have wind and we have rain and all the rest of it. So there's a lot of luck involved in getting the bee or a lot of effort from the beekeeper. And for some years, there are no, uh, there is no honey production for some beekeepers. And we have to go to the big extent also of using helicopters to collect this honey. Although manuka bushes can also be found in Australia, New Zealand accounts for almost all of the world's production, with exports worth $204 million and expected to quadruple to $800 million by 2028. New Zealand's honey is protected by a quality standard that safeguards Manuka's special properties. This honey is an expensive honey, and anything that is expensive, people will try and copy. People will try and mimic or people will try and cheat. So a lot of the cost here isn't actually in the protection of it, all the research so we know it's unique, we know it's from New Zealand. We can identify it. We've put labs around the world to be able to do this identification. The New Zealand government has set up a standard to say what is Manuka honey. So how does the grading system work? And what exactly are you looking for in Manuka honey? We spoke to Dr. Adrian Charlton from Ferris Science a lab in the north of England where Manuka honey is tested to identify its unique compounds. As standard, we, we will test for um, three compounds. Um, dihydroxyacetone, which is known as DHA, methylglyoxal, known as MGO, and um, hydroxymethylfluorofluorol, HMF. These are the, the, the basic tests that we, that we would undertake to make sure that um, Manuka honey contains the antimicrobial characteristics that um, the consumer would expect. We can detect them, but we can also measure the concentration of them, um, and that's done using UV light um, to detect at a particular wavelength the individual compounds. Each compound has slightly different properties. But because of the issues um, in the past with potential fraud, there's a suite of other tests, including tests for compounds such as leptosperin, which is a marker that's unique to the nectar of leptosperin scoparium. We can trace then the honey back to its, its botanical origin, the plant that it came from. When you pick up a jar of Manuka honey, the markers can be confusing. So how do you know that it's the real deal? So in some cases they're labelling for the concentration of a compound, so MGO 300 would indicate 300 milligrams of methylglyoxal in that particular pot of honey per kilogram, to NPA, which is non-peroxide activity. Now that's, that's related to the methylglyoxal concentration, but it's a more direct um, measure of the antimicrobial activity of the honey. Um, other, other marks, such as UMF, a quality mark, that if you can see a particular stamp on a product that it's been tested and assured to a certain standard, so that's different to actually labelling it with the concentration of a particular compound. Another factor that's driving up the price is the use of Manuka honey in health and beauty products. Its antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties are said to soothe and nourish the skin. And it's also said to help with blemishes and acne. But is that really the case? There's been a number of studies that have tried to um, determine the health benefits of uh, Manuka honey and there are some very positive results and certainly in terms of anti antimicrobial activity we can show that, that, um, that Manuka honey has antimicrobial activity in the laboratory. That, that those clinical trials over a long period of time have not, have not been undertaken as of yet but um, there, are, there are lots of reports that indicate um, that, that Manuka honey has benefits, but um, as yet unproven. 
So the jury's still out on Manuka's medicinal properties, but that hasn't stopped its popularity, and Manuka honey is serious business. The prices and demand for the honey are so high that the New Zealand police have received hundreds of reports of beehives or honey being stolen, and even reports of bees being poisoned. So if you do manage to get your hands on a jar, does it actually taste different from normal honey? Oh my god. That is delicious. The flavour is really strong. It's very like very thick compared to normal honey. It's got a kind of chestnutty flavour. It's not as sweet as usual honey. It's really smooth. And the taste is pretty similar to what I'm used to. The texture is really interesting. It's very, very thick, almost like creamy. Is Manuka honey really worth a hundred times more than other honey? That's for you to judge. But what's for certain is that no other honey in the world is so rare and unique that it needs to pass by a lab before being sold. <laughs>